apple eats. It's a small protein, 34,000 molecular weight. It's primarily synthesized in the liver by hepatocytes. But the second most common site of synthesis for ApoE is in the brain, both by astrocytes and, to a certain extent, by neurons. Macrophages throughout the body also synthesize ApoE, including microglia that, that occur uh, in the brain. It's transported on various plasma lipoproteins, and there it has the important function of mediating binding and uptake of uh, lipoproteins by specific lipoprotein receptors, like the LDL receptor. Its major role is to participate in delivering cholesterol and other lipids to cells for membrane synthesis, repair processes, and uh, so forth. Now, the first clue <coughs> that ApoE might actually be important in neurobiology came from the observation by a Dr. John Taylor at the Gladstone uh, in the mid-1980s when he realized that ApoE was being produced in significant concentrations within the brain. What in the world was a heart disease protein uh, doing in the brain? And so that begins our journey into neurological disease. In association with collaborators at Stanford, I demonstrated that ApoE was involved in uh, nerve injury and repair. But the real boost for ApoE being important in neurobiology came in 1993 when Dr. Alan Roses and his group at Duke University established through genetic analysis that ApoE, specifically ApoE4, was linked to Alzheimer's disease. And since that, our, since that time, our group and many other groups around the country and the world have been looking at the mechanisms whereby ApoE4 may be involved in neurodegenerative diseases, especially Alzheimer's disease. In fact, we now know that it is uh, the major genetic risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, the apolipoprotein E4. Now, ApoE4 has a very significant impact on Alzheimer's disease. It's important to, for you to know that ApoE4 is not rare in the human population. About 25% of us have at least one ApoE4 allele. If, in fact, there are 400 of us here this morning, that's 100 of us will actually have uh, this allele. ApoE4 impacts Alzheimer's disease in two different ways. It increases the risk. If you're a homozygous for the normal form of E, E3, Alzheimer's disease risk is at about 20% during one's lifetime. But if you're homozygous for ApoE4, that risk includes, increases to 90%. Heterozygotes uh, are in between. Second of all, ApoE4 increases the age of onset of Alzheimer's uh, disease. If you're homozygous for E3, Alzheimer's disease typically occurs around the age of 80, but if you're homozygous for E4, at 16 years earlier, at the age of 68. For me, at my age, that's far too young to develop such a, uh, a terrible uh, disorder. But what is really important for you to remember is that if you look at all patients with Alzheimer's disease, 65 to 80 percent of them have at least one ApoE4 uh, allele. And thus, ApoE4, clearly established, is the major genetic risk factor uh, for Alzheimer's disease. Now, with respect to Alzheimer's disease, what is now appreciated is that there are multiple factors acting through various pathways causing the cognitive decline and the neurodegeneration. The amyloid hypothesis is, the amyloid hypothesis 
is the most common hypothesis related to Alzheimer's disease, focusing on a peptide called the amyloid beta peptide, which does in fact cause neurotoxicity, a disruption of synaptic connections, the formation of plaques within the brain, leading to cognitive decline uh, and neurodegeneration. But it's also now clearly established from the work of a number of investigators around the world that apple, there are ApoE isoform specific effects on this pathway and that ApoE4 can accelerate this whole uh, process. However, our data clearly indicate that ApoE4 can act independent of the A-beta or the amyloid pathway. That ApoE4 has a direct effect independent of amyloid on cognitive decline uh, and uh, neurodegeneration. ApoE4 alone has a number of detrimental effects when it's expressed in the brain. It impairs synaptic connect, uh, uh, connections. It causes direct neuronal toxicity. And it impairs learning and memory in a number of our ApoE uh, uh, animal model studies. In fact, I believe that ApoE4 is in fact the most important factor involved in Alzheimer's disease. Well, what we've shown is that nerve cells, which are stressed or injured, turn on the synthesis of ApoE. The uh, stresses or the injurious agents can be uh, any number of things that will lead to damage to a neuron. Those stressors can be aging. They can be oxidative stress, trauma, traumatic brain injury, concussions, A-beta deposition uh, itself. All of these stressors turn on the synthesis of ApoE by nerve cells. Now, in the context of ApoE4 being produced, the E4 becomes a toxic. Well, what, why do, do neurons begin to synthesize ApoE when they are damaged? And that brings us back to the cardiovascular area, in which we learned that the function of ApoE is to participate in the redistribution of lipids for repair and remodeling. Now, in this case, repair and remodeling uh, of neurons.